Hello, my name is Adrian, and welcome to another episode of Fight Scene Breakdown. On this series, we take a look at your favorite fight scenes from various forms of media and analyze them from a martial arts perspective. Today, we're examining the warehouse fight scene from The Perfect Weapon. This sequence takes place near the end of the 1991 martial arts classic The Perfect Weapon, where a protagonist infiltrates a warehouse in order to take out the main villain of the movie and many of his henchmen. By this time in the 90s, it was pretty much law that action films had to have a final showdown at a warehouse. And it's one of the reasons why my brother and I also included a final showdown at a warehouse for our film Soul Hunters. In any case, returning to the perfect weapon, Jeff must use his extensive skills in Kempo in order to take on the bad guy's henchmen. At this point in the movie, he is not only avenging a friend, but stopping a criminal organization as well. So the stakes are not only personal, but will impact the world around them too. Once Jeff has infiltrated the warehouse, he gets to his first proper fisticuffs exchange with this guy right here. We begin with a wide shot showing him quickly approaching Jeff with a weapon. We cut to a second wide shot in which we see much more of the two fighters and can clearly see how Jeff avoids the attack and counterattacks. This is followed by a quick cut to a medium shot in order to more clearly see Jeff's follow-up attack, as well as one more medium to see Jeff's combo continue and it ends just the way it began, in a wide to see the henchman defeated. Although the cuts are quick, sometimes happening in less than a second, what's key here is that the shots themselves can easily be understood and help to tell the story of the fight scene at hand. They aren't shaky, they aren't lit poorly, and they aren't indecipherable close-ups. They are there to accentuate the impact of the action and to better appreciate the particular technique on display. This sort of cinematography and editing is present during the rest of the sequence and holds true for the rest of the movie as well, especially during this incredibly well done double stick sequence that follows shortly afterwards. Here on Fight Scene Breakdown, sometimes we take a look at unique fight scenes which serve to highlight a very specific martial art. For example, you can see the incredible complexity and swiftness of Wing Chun Kung Fu in Donnie Yen's legendary fight scene in It Man, or the brutal efficiency of Salat in The Raid Redemption starring Iko Weiss, or even the lightning fast kicks of Taekwondo in the excellent finale of Michael J. White's Blood and Bone. And in this instance, the movie serves as a great introduction into the martial art of Kenpo, also known as American Kenpo Karate. It is a martial arts style founded and codified by Ed Parker from his training in martial arts including karate. He never named a successor to his art, but rather entrusted his senior students to continue his teachings in their own ways. As a matter of fact, he is quoted to having said that he believes Kenpo will always be the art of perpetual change. He adds that if this is remembered, the art will never become obsolete because it will change with the times. One of his students was Jeff Speakman. Since then, Jeff Speakman took Ed Parker's advice to heart and began to modify Kenpo techniques as the years went on to make them as effective as possible, as well as incorporate techniques from other martial arts to compensate for any weaknesses in the style. This is most notably seen in the presence of ground techniques in Kenpo 5.0. I had the honor of training with Jeff Speakman himself for a couple classes and was able to see a lot of the basics in this martial arts style through his teachings. For one, he discussed on how he has been continually evolving and changing the style with the times, and that is the reasoning behind the 5.0 in Kempo 5.0. It is the fifth iteration of the style that he has been working on for several years. The building blocks of Kempo are still very much ingrained in Kempo 5.0, and we can see several of them at play during this scene's fight choreography. One thing you can tell from the previously highlighted exchange is that after one brief attack, Jeff counterattacks with strikes designed to make his opponent react in a specific way that sets him up for the next strike. This is built into every single one of the techniques in Kempo 5.0. Jeff Speakman demonstrates this concept in this Kempo 5.0 technique called Shielding Hammer, where after one initial attack, he responds with several rapid fire strikes. Returning to the film, the strong punch to the gut makes his attacker keel over, exposing the back of his head where Jeff continues his attack with hammer strikes and ends with a back fist. Or in this instance, he avoids the knife attack by moving to the left, or stepping off the line, as it's called in Kempo, and then firmly guides the attacker's knife-wielding hand right into his own thigh. In this case, he also deflects a knife attack, but this time the back of his opponent's head reveals itself as a prime target afterwards, so Jeff follows up with a spinning elbow. A piece of choreography I just had to highlight from this fight that I have yet to see done so well in any action scene is this part right here. After deflecting a knife attack which causes his opponent to stab his own leg, he then must defend himself against another attacker. So to do this he retrieves that very same knife from the leg, uses it to dispatch said foe and then promptly turns around and stabs him right in the same place again before ending the fight with a spin hook kick to the head. So awesome. Another Kenpo concept seen right here in this double stick combo is known as Marriage of Gravity. 
What this means is that when you're delivering your strikes, you need to put your weight behind your techniques. Instead of just using your muscles, you use your body weight to help drive more power and intensity to your strikes. So in this case, note how he doesn't just swing the weapons down with his arms. He takes a forceful step and lowers his body to drive more weight into the technique, and once again uses his whole body to deliver the follow-up attack. If you enjoyed this analysis and would like to see more of them, I invite you to check out the fight scene breakdown playlist, as I've already analyzed several legendary fight scenes including the ones mentioned in this episode, as well as other classic gems, such as the opening fight in Undisputed 2. I'd like to thank each one of my Patreon members as their contribution helped in the making of this video. If you'd like to contribute and appear in the credits in the future, my Patreon page is Godzilla Rex and it's in the description below. What did you think of the perfect weapon? Do any of you train in Kempo 5.0? What other fight scene would you like to see broken down? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more awesome videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.